The strangers try to rear-end them, but the driver skillfully avoids it. At one point, the driver starts driving in reverse at full speed and then changes courses with a drift. The stranger loses control of the car and rolls over. The movie begins with a man, surprisingly named driver, making a phone call in a room. He is the driver you would want to hire during a bank robbery. At the moment, he is actually making a deal with an individual for a new robbery. The driver informs the person on the other end of the line that he has five minutes to do what he has to do and that whatever happens after that time will no longer be up to him. Finally, he tells him to forget his cell phone number and leaves the room. The protagonist gets involved in various car-related things, street racing, car mechanics, stunts, and escape missions. Later that evening, he meets his boss, Shannon, who has prepared a sports car for the escape mission. The driver takes the car and drives away. He waits outside for two robbers who are robbing a bank. Then, he sets a five-minute timer and waits patiently for them. The main character is a kind person who is soft-spoken, easygoing, and, at the same time, tough. He speaks little and acts more, sticking to his words regardless of the circumstances. He expresses himself through actions rather than words. Meanwhile, the driver can access the police station's radio and stay one step ahead of the police. A few minutes later, the first thief enters with a bag full of money. The second robber has not yet arrived, but the five minutes are not over, so the driver waits patiently. Fortunately, the second robber comes shortly after, and the driver leaves immediately. During the journey, the driver realizes that the police are chasing them. The protagonist hides behind a car and turns off the headlights. After the police car drives away, the driver sets off at full speed and crosses a bridge. However, he spots a police helicopter and cleverly hides under a bridge. Then, the driver resumes driving and, a few blocks later, stops at a traffic light. Unfortunately, he is immediately spotted by a patrol car. The team alerts other patrols to the driver's location. Still, the driver accelerates as soon as the green light goes off. The driver, tuning into the police frequency, hears everything they say and uses it to get his bearings. Knowing the police have spotted him, he speeds off, followed by the police car. Finally, he enters a garage, parks his car, and walks away, passing by a police officer. Later that night, the protagonist returns home and meets his blonde-haired neighbor, Irene. The next day, the protagonist works as a stuntman in a movie and plays a police officer. According to the script, his car has to be overturned, so he has to sign a document that removes responsibility from the producer in case he dies. Fortunately, the protagonist completes the scene and emerges unharmed. Later that day, the driver is shopping for groceries and spots his neighbor and her son, but he tries to avoid them. When he goes outside, the protagonist notices that Irene has a car problem and goes to help her. He then helps her carry groceries into the house and immediately befriends her son, Benicio. Irene gives him a glass of water and tries to discover more about him, but the protagonist speaks little. The driver tells him he works as a mechanic and then returns home. In the next scene, Shannon, the driver's boss and car dealer, meets Jewish mobster Bernie Rose and his half-Italian associate Nino at a restaurant. Shannon tries to convince them to invest in the protagonist's car racing. Shannon is sure that the driver will excel if Bernie can buy a car for him. Bernie Rose tries to find out what is unique about the driver, and Shannon states that his skills are excellent. Now, Bernie asks to meet the driver to see his abilities and get to know him. The next day, Bernie sees the driver demonstrating his driving skills. Bernie is impressed and agrees to invest $300,000, taking 70% of the profit. Shannon, thrilled, agrees without negotiating a penny. Later that day, Irene and her son go to Shannon's workshop to repair her car. When the driver notices them, he smiles and goes to greet them. Shannon is surprised that the driver knows them because he has no friends. Soon after, Shannon says repairing Irene's car will take a while and asks the main character to give her a ride home. On the way, the driver says he wants to show her a place, and Irene agrees. They drive for a while and then stop by a stream to play. The driver's friendship with Irene and her son grows stronger as they spend more time together. Later that evening, the driver takes them home, and Irene tells him she had a wonderful day. The protagonist then says that he is accessible over the weekend and they could spend it together. In later scenes, we see Irene and the protagonist driving in a car together, holding hands. One day, Bernie and Nino visit Shannon's garage to see how the vehicle is progressing and how the driver is preparing for the race. When Nino sees the car, he is irritated because the car's exterior does not meet his taste and style, especially considering how much money he has invested. Bernie advises him to relax, saying that what matters is inside the car, not outside. Bernie approaches the driver and asks him if he is prepared for the race. 
He then tells him how he met Shannon. Bernie relates that many years ago, Shannon was severely beaten after failing to pay a debt to Nino. In this way, Bernie subtly threatens the driver by saying he cannot afford to fail. One evening, Irene informs the driver that her husband, Gabriel, is in jail and will be released in a week. The driver is obviously upset by the news, as he has become attached to Irene and her son. Irene celebrates her husband's return with a welcome party a week later. Gabriel invites his friends, and they drink together. Gabriel realizes that he has made a mistake and openly apologizes to everyone. He promises to make amends with them and tells Irene he loves her. However, during the party, Irene does not seem very happy because she has also become attached to the driver, therefore, she doesn't know how to feel. Later, the driver leaves the house and meets Irene in the hallway. Soon after, Gabriel arrives and praises him for helping his family while in prison. The following day, the driver has breakfast at a diner, and a criminal he worked with recognizes him. When the man starts talking to him, the driver tells him he will do it for him if he doesn't shut up. Later, the driver drives into a parking lot and notices two suspicious-looking men. Soon after, he finds Gabriel beaten to a pulp and Benicio nearby. The driver is immediately concerned about the young boy and asks him if he is alright. When the driver asks what happened, he discovers that Gabriel owes $40,000 to an Albanian criminal for his protection while in detention. Gabriel was beaten because he refused to rob a pawn shop to pay the money. In addition, the driver discovers that criminals have threatened Gabriel with killing Irene and Benicio if he does not repay the debt. Later, the driver talks to Irene and discovers she knows nothing about Gabriel's obligations. Her husband told her that he was beaten by two drunk men. The next day, the driver steals a Mustang and meets the criminals to whom Gabriel owes $40,000. The protagonist volunteers to be the driver and explains his rules, such as the five-minute rule. The criminal, named Cook, makes him understand that will not take a penny for the robbery. The driver tells him they don't care about the money, they just need to leave Gabriel and his family alone after the mission. The big day arrives, and Cook's accomplices, Gabriel and a red-haired woman named Blanche, prepare to rob a pawn shop. The driver sets the timer, and Gabriel proudly claims to be able to accomplish the task in four minutes. Subsequently, Gabriel goes inside with Blanche. Shortly after that, another car arrives in the parking lot. Blanche gets out with a bag a few minutes later, and the driver opens the door. Blanche gets into the car, and Gabriel exits the pawn shop shortly after. However, the owner shoots him several times, killing him. The driver is shocked but can do nothing to save him, so he drives away quickly. Suddenly, the car that had arrived in the parking lot just now starts chasing them. The strangers try to re-rend them, but the driver skillfully avoids it. At one point, the driver starts driving in reverse at full speed and then changes courses with a drift. The stranger loses control of the car and rolls over. The driver takes Blanche to a hotel room and asks if she knows anything about what happened earlier. Meanwhile, policemen arrive at Irene's house and ask if she has seen her husband. Irene is puzzled and upset by the whole situation. The driver dials Irene's number, but Benicio answers. The young boy informs the driver that Irene is talking to the police. Before hanging up, the driver tells him to inform Irene of his call. The robbery is widely publicized, and a news reporter paints it as a failed robbery and identifies the murdered victim as Gabriel. Strangely, the owner claims that Gabriel acted alone and that no money was stolen from him. The driver finds this suspicious and begins to question Blanche. However, Blanche claims to know nothing, but the driver knows she is lying. The driver slaps her hard, saying that Benicio has been left without a father because of her, and they almost died too. Blanche admits that she was informed that there would be another car. She also reveals that the loot is $1 million and that Cook has made arrangements with her for the money to be stolen again. Basically, Cook wanted to deceive the people he works with by stealing the money he stole and blaming it on someone else. However, Blanche knew nothing about Gabriel's killing. The driver tells her that they will go together to see Cook, and she agrees. A few moments later, the driver notices someone trying to get inside the room. Suddenly, Blanche is shot in the head by one of Cook's henchmen while washing her face. The woman's brain bursts into pieces, and she dies instantly. The driver rescues himself by overturning the mattress and overpowering and stabbing the first henchman who entered through the window. He then takes the rifle and kills the second man instantly. Later that evening, the driver gets the wound on his arm treated by a doctor. While the protagonist is resting, Shannon offers to help him hide the money. Still, the driver clarifies that he is not interested in money. All he wants to do now is get revenge. The driver finds Cook in his strip club and fractures his finger with a hammer. Cook reveals that Nino is the mastermind of the robbery. At that point, the driver calls Nino and tells him he has money. The protagonist tells him that he wants to meet him to give him the money and end it all.
The driver visits Irene and informs her that Gabriel only committed the robbery to save his family. He then explains the whole situation to her and tells her that she can have the money if she wants. At this point, Irene slaps him. The driver said they could take the money and run away with Benicio. The elevator door opens as they talk, and they see a smartly dressed man. The driver turns around and notices that the man is armed. He quickly realizes that he is a henchman of Nino's and turns to kiss Irene passionately. Suddenly, the driver starts beating the henchman and smashing his head with his foot. After that, the driver turns to look at a terrified Irene. Later, the driver meets with Shannon and informs him that the thugs know where he lives. Shannon admits that he called them and told them about Irene. As soon as he hears this, the driver pounces on him furiously but manages to restrain himself from killing him. The driver tells Shannon to leave and not return because Nino and Bernie will chase him. Meanwhile, Bernie scolds Nino for starting the robbery without informing him. It turns out that the pawn shop owner is a member of their mafia family. He intended to invest the money in Los Angeles, creating a competing business that would threaten Nino and Bernie. Bernie tells him that if their partners learn that they have robbed a member of the mafia family, they will be killed. So now they must kill everyone who knows about the robbery, including Shannon and the driver. Finally, Bernie, who deeply hates Cook, takes a knife and kills him mercilessly for failing the mission. The driver goes to the film set and steals a mask. In the process, Shannon is about to leave when Bernie visits him to ask where the driver is. Shannon claims that he has no idea where he is. Bernie talks about the robbery and the disaster the driver has created. Finally, Bernie kills Shannon by slitting his wrists. Later, the driver returns to the garage and finds Shannon dead in a pool of his own blood. Later, the driver, wearing a mask, goes to Nino's bar. He then chases him as he is on his way home. On the way, the protagonist rerends Nino's car, and his personal driver stops to see what happened. Soon after, the protagonist speeds along and violently rerends Nino's car, sending it flying. Nino, injured, gets out of the car and tries to escape, but the driver chases and kills him. Later that night, the driver calls Bernie and informs him that Nino is dead. At this point, Bernie suggests they meet to give him the money and end the war. The driver has no choice but to agree, otherwise, Bernie will kill Irene and Benicio. The driver agrees and then calls Irene to tell her he has to go somewhere and does not know if he will return. He also tells her that being near her and Benicio was the best thing that ever happening to him. The next day, the driver meets Bernie at a restaurant, who asks him if he brought the money. Bernie makes his proposal and says that if the driver pays him the money, he will guarantee the safety of Irene and Benicio. Still, he cannot promise the same to him. The driver must put his dreams aside because he will likely be killed. The protagonist agrees, and they go outside. However, when the driver opens the trunk, Bernie stabs him after he sees the bag with the money. Similarly, the driver stabs Bernie with a knife a couple of times. The criminal dies a few moments later, and the driver survives, although badly injured. He stays in the car for a moment, staring into space, and then drives away, leaving Bernie dead with the money. Irene knocks on the driver's door but receives no answer, a sign that he will never return. In the final scenes, the protagonist drives away in an unknown direction. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.